How to smoke ribs. Ribs. Just like baseball and the 4th of July, smoked ribs are an American institution. Nothing beats a backyard barbecuing session with smoked ribs amongst friends and family. Thankfully, smoking ribs is an easy task, even if you don't have an expensive smoker. With a beautifully smoked rack of ribs, you'll have your guests begging for seconds and your secret recipe. Trimming the ribs and making the rub. Select your cut of meat. Food safety is important when cooking raw meat, so find a fresh pink rack of ribs at your local grocery store. Many people choose to smoke with St. Louis-style spare ribs, which come from near the belly on the pig. They are substantial and tasty, very easy to cook. If you like, you can also select baby back ribs, which come from the backside, near the loin. Since baby back ribs are a little less substantial, they're harder to smoke while still keeping them juicy and tender. Adjust this recipe if you do decide to use baby back ribs, the cooking time will lower significantly. Since baby back ribs are a little less substantial, they're harder to smoke while still keeping them juicy and tender. Adjust this recipe if you do decide to use baby back ribs, the cooking time will lower significantly. Remove the thick, sinewy membrane on the back of the ribs. With a fingernail or a knife, work your way under the light membrane on the back of the ribs. Grab a hold of the loosened membrane with a paper towel and pry it from the ribs. Much of it should come off in one fell swoop. Discard. Spot check the ribs for any substantial bits of fat and remove. With a sharp knife, remove any excess fat that's still clinging to your ribs. Although a little fat is fine and will probably render off during the cooking process, eating a chewy hunk of fat when you're expecting a tender morsel of meat is not the most pleasant experience. A little bit of extra preparation during this step will make the eating experience a lot nicer in the end. Make your rub. A dry rub is a spice mix that coats the rack of ribs and provides complementary flavor to the meat's natural taste. Dry rubs can be made any number of ways dehydration, spice mixing, etc. and using any number of recipes. Explore different recipes and variations to suit your own tastes, or use this very basic dry rub as a springboard for your own invention. 1 quarter cup brown sugar 1 quarter cup paprika 3 tablespoons black pepper 3 tablespoons coarse salt 2 teaspoons garlic powder 2 teaspoons onion powder 2 teaspoons celery seeds 1 teaspoon cayenne pepper 1 quarter cup brown sugar 1 quarter cup paprika 3 tablespoons black pepper 3 tablespoons coarse salt 2 teaspoons garlic powder 2 teaspoons onion powder 2 teaspoons celery seeds 1 teaspoon cayenne pepper. Apply your rub generously over the entire rack of ribs, coating it evenly. Don't be stingy with your dry rub. Even if you're planning on smothering your ribs with a wet sauce later on in the cooking process, it helps to have the ribs nice and coated early on in the process, when the bulk of the cooking happens. Use 1 to 2 tablespoons of dry rub at least per pound of meat. Let your ribs come to room temperature while you set up. After applying the rub, let the meat start to soak up some of the delicious spices you've acquainted it with. Meat, meat, spice, spice, meat, meat. This does two things in particular. It allows the dry rub to start penetrating the meat, permeating it with flavor. It allows for a juicier rack of ribs. When salt hits meat, it brings moisture out to the surface. If you apply your rub and cook right away, the moisture brought out to the surface will leave your precious pork. If you apply your rub and let the meat rest, however, the moisture journeys back into the meat through a process called osmosis. This process produces consistently juicier meat.